As an artist, you often have to make your own opportunities. That's where DIY, or do-it-yourself, comes into play. It's a way of starting and even maintaining a career, even when you don't have support from a gallery, museums, or the system of patronage. Hey, a little bit of Dallas art history. This building behind me is known as the Casket Factory. In 2005, I co-organized the first art fair here in Dallas along with Cynthia Mulcahy. And we had a lot of alternative spaces come to Dallas, some who were already a part of the scene, but others came from Houston and Austin, even as far as Chicago, spaces came here. This was gonna be the original location of the fair, so we titled it Casket Factory Fair. But at the last moment, it was moved to the main building there at the south side on Lamar, as it was known at the time, into that building. We kept the title and it turned out to be a really cool alternative fair with around 12 to 15 spaces from around Texas and nationally. So a little slice of Dallas art history from around 20 years ago here on the Cedars area, as it's now known. It used to just be called the South Side. Being a DIY artist starts out with just having the courage to create a project and put it out to the world. In making the commitment to act, you recognize that your project may or may not be well received, but you first got to light that fire by believing in yourself and in what you do. And once you decide to act, there can be no going back. So now we're a few blocks down from the south side, nearing Corinth Street. And we're in front of a building that used to be the home for Moon Tunes Industries, a notorious underground punk club that was on the Dallas scene around the turn of the millennium, right around the 2000 time period. They did a lot of great traveling underground punk and hardcore shows and even some collaborations with the first iteration of Plush Gallery over on South Ackard Street. Once you've made that decision to put yourself out there, then you've got to create and build a brand. For me, that brand was Plush Gallery. Plush was built on the image of a used and faded velvet sofa. So now we're coming to the location of the original Plush Gallery at 1404 South Ackard Street. In the spring of 2000, my buddy Joe Allen and I rented this space and demoed the inside. I opened Plush Gallery and Joe opened Purple Orchid right next door on the inside of the building. We stayed here for one year before moving next door to 1410 South Ackard Street. So the first two and a half to three years of Plush Gallery was here on the south side, just south of downtown Dallas. This was really the most underground period in Plush's history with a lot of experimental shows, live music, performance art, all kinds of crazy happenings in addition to the art exhibitions. It was really fun. We went from the south side into a couple of spaces on downtown, which constitute the next period of Plush's history. Connecting with community is the next important thing you will want to do. For myself, I was interested in bringing together far-flung and diverse communities most of which would not typically encounter each other in real life. So we had art shows alongside punk performances, shows that featured a noise band opening for an emo act. I love that uncomfortable edge where you're exposed to something unusual and different. Going back a little further to the early 1990s, I have my studio here over on South Hardwood Street. It was super rough back then. Well, I can't even get through. The road is closed off. We'll try to see if there's an alternative way to get back there. This whole area has changed so much in the last 20 to 30 years. It was the early 90s and I had just finished my grad school. Actually I was still working 
on my thesis project and I rented a studio here on South Hardwood Street. The building doesn't even exist anymore, but I can at least show you where it was located. So we're coming up on the block. That used to be a burger joint. And where these townhouses are, there was just a nondescript, kind of one story, super beat up warehouse space. I lived in my studio space there for about six months and it was super sketchy. I would ride in on my moped, open the steel gate and get inside and close the gate immediately. It was just really scary. I remember hearing gunshots outside, a lot of homeless people hanging out in the lots nearby. But I made some great work there, had some great crib experiences over here on the south side. Those were the days before the internet or even cell phones were common. So when I wanted to call someone, I would walk over to the Latin bar across the street and use the payphone to reach out to them. I think that is the best analogy for what the DIY world is like. You have an idea, an urgent one, and because the idea is so strong that you believe it will attract the right audience. It will find its right expression in the world. And all you have to do is act. Mm -hmm.